studying off and on about different people in the Bible. And this is another very interesting fellow. And we're going to be reading. Again, welcome all the YouTube people and the uh, folks who are watching on Facebook. We sure do appreciate you. We know that you're there watching, and, and uh, we just appreciate you very, very much. And we're going to be reading from Acts 11, 19 through 26. 19 through 26. Acts 11, 19 through 26. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution in the connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people received and turned to the Lord, or believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived he saw and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord. With all their hearts, he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus and, and to look for, for Saul. And when he found him, he, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That's a good trivia question, isn't it? The first place in time Christians were called Christians was in Antioch. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. A little boy was in school, and his whole class was given an assignment to write a story about anything you wanted to write, and oh, he took it so seriously. And he worked hard, and he wrote it, and finally it was done, and he took it home to show to his mother. And his mother read it. <coughs> but being a school teacher herself, she started circling all the spelling mistakes and all the grammar and all the errors in it. She handed it back to him, and to her surprise, his eyes swelled up. Tears started rolling down his cheeks. And she says, what's the matter, honey? He says, Mama, I didn't want you to fix it. I just wanted you to like it. Unfortunately, I think so many of us, that kind of describes us from time to time. I know it is with me. We're quick to find fault, but we're slow to find praise. It's easy to do for all of us. But as Christians, we are to be a jumper cable to those that need a, a jump, a little bit of encouragement. Encouragement means to, to give courage and hope that will flow from one person to another. And that's like a jumper cable, isn't it? And that's what we're supposed to be to other people. Now, today's lesson was from a, about a man by the name of Barnabas. That was John Mark's cousin. And it's interesting that Barnabas was not his given name, but actually was a nickname that stuck to him. And we all know him in the Bible as Barnabas. But you know how he got his name? From all of his friends. And you know what Barnabas means? It means son of encouragement. Look at our, there's several verses we're going to read here in just a minute, but there's a key verse that I'd like you to look at. Look at Acts 11, 24, Tyler. Acts 11, 24. He was a good man, Barnabas was, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Wow, what an what a explanation or a, or a title for somebody. To be a good man, 
a good person, full of the Holy Spirit, and someone who loved to encourage. Wouldn't that be a good title? Well, let's look at the story of Barnabas real quick. Number one, the description of Barnabas' life. That's your number one in your insert. Now, it said one of the first things that we read, it said he was a good man. Look at A. He was good because he was godly. We see good man and all kinds of different things like that in our Bible. It doesn't mean that they were perfect. It doesn't mean they were born naturally good. It doesn't mean they were inherently good. It doesn't mean their grandma and grandpa and the whole line were good people. It doesn't mean that. They may have been. It doesn't even mean they was legally good. But what it does mean that he was good on the inside because of something that had happened to him. Something that had happened to him. They had found Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit had come to live inside them. Good because he was godly and he had the Holy Spirit. Here's your next question. Good because he was being infused with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I love that word infused. You, you people that cook a lot, you know you infuse this flavor and it mix with this flavor and they infuse. I love that. This goodness manifested itself in all kinds of ways because we're infused with Christ. Well, let's look at some of the other ways. B. It said he was a very generous man. <coughs> One of our first encounters of Barnabas it is Acts 4, 46 through 47. Let's read that. Acts 4, 46 through 47. Joseph, a Levite from uh, Cyprus, who the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. The next one. And a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. He was a giving man. He gave all of his money from this land that he sold and laid it at their feet. Now, this wasn't real uncommon in the early days of the church. They were mentally and very often thinking about who they could help, what they can do, which led to sharing what they had with one another. And which led, as we read a while ago, led to new people believing and accepting Jesus Christ. Barnabas had done that, and he led many people to Christ. Now I want you to think about this. Here's your next question. Whenever generosity abounds, encouragement abounds. Whenever generosity abounds, encouragement. C. He was a man full of grace. He was full of grace. Barnabas was one of the first to give grace to a man by the name of Paul, or his first name, of course, was Saul. Now, we remember Saul. He was the one that persecuted the Christians right after Jesus left this earth. He was getting people and putting them in the prison, but then he had a meeting with Jesus Christ, didn't he? And he changed, but no one trusted him. Everybody was scared to death of him. After all, he had put Christians to death. You can't blame him for that. But Barnabas, Barnabas forgave him. He reached out to Paul, welcomed him to the church, had him come alongside them and to meet other people. And what he was telling Barnabas is, I forgive you. And I have faith in you. I give all that's in the past, just as God has given grace to you. So I do to you also. That's what he told him. We have opportunities to do that in our lives. So oftentimes, people in our lives disappoint us. They do things that we wish they didn't do. They do things that we wish they, they wouldn't say. But so oftentimes they just need some encouragement to say, I forgive you, and I'm alongside of you. 
forgiveness, words of encouragement needed so badly today. Your next question. We will never know what impact our extension of grace to another person will have. Sometimes we just want to fix them of what they really need is grace. You can't. How many times have I said this? I better be careful of these things or I'll end up on a sign, won't it? You can't clean a fish until you catch it. The encouragement will find someone looking for what is best in a person's life, building them in Build them up and not tearing them down. Let's look at this wonderful scripture, Ephesians 4.29. Ephesians 4.29, something we need to have on our, our refrigerator door. It's getting full, isn't it? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might benefit those who listen to their needs and what they need to hear at the time. Number two, the differences a Barnabas can make. Well, let's look what Barnabas' differences he made real quickly. A, if not Paul. If he hadn't gone to Paul and put his arm around him and says, come on, let's go meet these people. Let's go mingle. Let's go show them how true you are how real you are, how confident you are, how much God has put around you to give and to use, spoke well of him, introduced him. What if he hadn't done those things? Would Paul gotten sidetracked? Would he gotten discouraged? Would he have been able to do all the magnificent things he did, and especially preaching and teaching to the Gentiles? Would he have been able to do that? Another person, B, if not John Mark. Later on down the road, we learn that Paul and John Mark got into it in their second missionary journey, and they separated. But Barnabas, he went to him. He went to his cousin, put his arm around him, encouraged him and strengthened him, and in time, John Mark was qualified and confident enough to write the accounts of the life of Jesus Christ in the book that we call Mark. What if not? What if no one had ever gone to him and put their arms around him and encouraged him? C. If not, and there's a blank there, whose name can you put in there? someone who's having a bad week, a bad day, a good year, a bad year. Whose name can we put in there? Who do we know that needs encouragement and we need a, someone to put their arm around them? We need a whole lot of Barnabases in this world because we live in a broken world. We live in a world of discouragement. If we just look around at all the bad things that's going on, we can just have our heads hanging down and go, oh my goodness, we'll never get out of this. What a terrible world we're in. They need someone to put their arms around them. Who is it that needs that for you? God did not intend for us to struggle through this world alone. It's not a surprise to him that all this corruption and murder and pain and suffering and disease, he knew it all was going to happen. But he didn't expect us to go through it alone. The fact that Barnabas was a good, gracious, full of grace God, godly man, is because he was full of the Holy Spirit. He had accepted Christ, and the Holy Spirit was living in him, and he was acting on him. I have news for you. The same Holy Spirit that gave him the strength to do it, you and I both have. All of us have it. If we've accepted Christ, we all have the Holy Spirit. We all have the ability to be an encourager. 
We're filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're able to show that in Christian love. Here's your last one. The same glory brought to God through Barnabas' life can be brought to him through our lives. Through our lives. Barnabas, Barnabas and all the things he did brought glory to God. You and I can do the same thing. We can bring glory to God through our lives. I want to close with this story. In 1993, the police in South Windsor, Connecticut, were handing out tickets like you wouldn't believe. Just one right after the other. Pulling over people and giving them these tickets. Now, a lady by the name of Lori Carlson was one that got the ticket. And she was interviewed by the news later on. She says, yeah, I got pulled over. And she says, I just couldn't believe what I had done wrong. And you know how that is. We see a cop, we get nervous. We hire cops to protect us, and we get nervous when we see one. She said, I couldn't think what all I had done wrong, if anything. And the policeman came, wrote her out a ticket, and it said this, you're doing a great job, and we appreciate it. (laughs) He gave her a ticket for driving great. It certainly wasn't what she expected. Another department did the same thing. Gave them $2 reward for wearing their seat belts, turn signals, seat belts, and officer says thank you. It's the last thing that you would expect. Now, I'm going to get off track and tell you a story about me. Long before I ever heard this story, and I was at the sheriff's office, it was summertime. They were being in a big push for kids to wear their helmets on bicycles. So I made up these cute little uh, certificates that said Sheriff Miller was at the time. He said, Sheriff Miller, thanks you for wearing your helmet. So I carried these around and looking, and there, finally, there was a little girl riding her bicycle with a helmet. So I drove up to her, and I got out to talk to her. It scared her to death, and she ran all the way home. (laughs) And I had to follow her and explain to her parents what I was trying to do. But there's all kinds of things that we can do to tell people. Sometimes we see things and we just don't think about saying thank you. I'll give you another example. It happened just the other day. I went into a, 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 a quick store and I used the bathroom there. That's not unusual. And this bathroom was really clean. It was sparkly and it smelled good. You know, it, you, it probably, I know it was probably just cleaned. I know that. But I appreciated it. And I went out to the lady that was working there, and I said, thank you so much for a clean bathroom. And you would have thought I had praised her for something huge. She couldn't believe it. But we, we think about those things. We don't think about thanking them. Seeing somebody working and doing some job, you know, they don't, you know, tell them, you're doing a good job. <coughs> the first thing <coughs> that people should see about a Christian is encouragement. (coughs) Encouragement and grace and forgiveness. Many people mean many things. They've done some bad things maybe and some things they shouldn't have done. But maybe one of the first things they need is forgiveness. That's what Christ did for us. That's what Jesus did for us. He didn't wait until we were all clean, did he? He didn't wait until we didn't have any more sins, thank goodness. He forgave us. And then he started working on us. Our closing scripture today. We have it. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that they may benefit those who listen. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this message.
Heavenly Father, we go through our lives sometimes forgetting to help those that are in need. Help us, O oh Lord, to realize that they too, so many people, need just a little bit of encouragement. We thank you, O oh Lord. Ask us, we ask you to guide us and direct us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is, I have no one to help me. What's the closing hymn today? What? 75, and it is family of God. Anyone who would like to join our church or dedicate their lives to Christ may come forward during this hymn.